Remember, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Ah. Uh, Except for herpes. That shit will come back with you. Hangover, movie deep dive. Hello? <clears throat> Tracy, it's Phil. Phil, where the hell are you guys? We lost Doug. What? We're getting married in five hours. Yeah, that's not gonna happen. <laughs> what happened last night? Oh, Am I missing a tooth? Oh. <laughs> Whose baby is that? Check its collar or something. I looked everywhere. Nobody's seen Doug. He's not here. Here's your car, officer. All right, everybody act cool. Let's just get in and go. I lost a tooth. I married a whore. How dare you? She's a nice lady. Some guys just can't handle Vegas. Mike Rylan, Big Ray. We're back. And we're the three best friends that anyone can have. We're the three best friends that anybody can have. And we're the three best friends that anybody could have. We're the three best friends that anyone could have. The Hangover, 2009. Uh, You're a great, ending, great high school, baby. Ending an amazing decade of comedies. Yep, like, probably right. the last great decade. For sure. Maybe one of the best decades. The 90s is close. Uh, it's refreshing how non-PC this movie is. I don't know what your guys' thoughts are on it, but it starts from the get-go with Phil's voicemail. Hey, it's Phil. Leave me a message. Or don't. Well, do me a favor. Don't text me. It's gay. Literally, he says gay, which... I don't think it's that bad, but he is a school teacher. Yeah. So would he be fired? Well, don't for text that? him. Would he be fired? Yeah, don't text this guy. Uh, he wouldn't be fired, but he would be not even hired. But if they found out, you know, after the fact, he's he's working there. There'd would be he a be Facebook fired? group. Um, There'd be a witch hunt. Yeah, I mean, yeah, no. If they found out what he did on this trip, yeah, they would, he would one hundred percent be. Question: fired. Uh, If I was a teacher, would I be fired for having this podcast? You would yes. be fired for having the look you got, bro. <laughs> oh, shit. You don't like the chops. I love the chops. Love the chops. Not, that would not be rolling in skid fucking school. Uh, so the intro we did, Jeffrey Tambor, the father-in-law, talking about the herpes thing. Quick Sid. question. Uh, did he actually get herpes? Is he implying he got it from Vegas, like personal experience, or is that just like a herpes joke? Remember, what happens in Vegas stays in Vegas. Ah. <laughs> Except for herpes. That shit will come back with you. I think it's just one of those jokes. Mm, I think he got it. I think he got it's it. It's like too. a wink, Cause, wink. Cause he was, yeah, he literally because he because I mean I don't know the way he says it when he he's at like, he's like stays in Vegas, but everything that happens in Vegas stays in Vegas, and then he gives that hard little pause. Except herpes, that shit comes back again. Like, yeah, he was this, dead yeah, serious yeah. about that, so I'm pretty sure he got it. Just that's the law of herpes, you know. Once you get it, not to get in the herpes conversation. Did you guys see it in theaters? 2009. Uh, yeah, saw the day it came out. No, I actually, I didn't see it for a minute after. I think, well, I know I was in college and I really wasn't watching movies in the theater. So whatever came out on film was where it was at. So, but I yeah. mean, overall, that era of movies, definitely epic. I think whoever, who put the movie together, Todd Phillips, Legendary Pictures. I mean, they pretty much have come out with all of my favorite movies ever. Legendary Pictures has things like... Um, Batman, Inception, The Town, 42 with Jackie Robinson, Jurassic World. Um, Todd Phillips, who's been a part of some other films, but teaming up with Legendary Pictures. Old School, The Hangover, Due Date, Limitless, Star Was Born, Road Trip, War this Dogs, is our third, Project X. This is our third Todd Phillips movie, yeah, right, by the yeah, way. Is, and yeah. we're only on our 17th, so we've done three out of 17 Todd Phillips. So obviously we love Todd Phillips. Yep. I actually Fucking messaged visionary. him on Instagram and told him he was the GOAT. Hopefully he sees it. He won't Hopefully he does. His, he, his he secretary won't. does. Sees that, Maybe. right? Yeah. I had a little um, though. So, Ray, you saw it in theaters? Yeah, so when I was in, uh, you know, I just graduated high school, and, you know, it was like the obvious thing to go see, you know. Just seeing the previews, you know, with, you know, just especially showing Bradley Cooper, the whole thing, you're just like, well, yeah, I mean, this is a no-brainer. Go see and it ended up being It was an event. One of the and it, the first time I saw it, right, I, I left the theater. Now, I don't think it's the funniest movie ever, but it's up there, but I left the theater. After the, the the clip of the you know the pictures of the night, thinking that was the funniest movie I've ever seen. Now I was 21 years old. I was drunk. There was like the stars aligned for this movie, but in the theaters, man, it was it was amazing. And to end the movie like they did, no movies ended it like that before. And what do we know about comedies, especially like the newer age comedies, the um, Judd Apatow movies, yeah. they they fucking bleed off and they die. And mm -hmm. the endings are the worst part. The, to have the ending be arguably the funniest part of the movie, and leaving you with that taste in your mouth. Hot just... take, how do you go to the movies drunk? 
I've done it once. Worst experience. Ever. I bring water, water bottle of liquor in there and keep on drinking. They hit the prototypes in this movie. You know, the friend group prototypes. We've all had our friend groups, like <clears throat> high school, post high school. Now we have our friend group. They hit it so well with, you got your, the bad influence, Phil. You get the straight edge guy, Doug. You get the crazy, in this case, the family, you know, the in-law, uh, Zach Galifianakis, right. Alan, who's just insane. And then you get the... Everyman. What, the everyman, whatever you want to call so, it, Helms. I'm going to say, um, so we clearly got Phil, Alan, and then... You're Phil? I'll be Stu. You're yeah. calling yourself Phil? Yeah. <laughs> look at you. Look at you. You're so here going You're yourself. much more Alan, but regardless. Are you regardless. kidding? I, I'm going to say you're Alan, man. All right, cool. You're the wolf pack Sweet. guy. I love it. Uh, and also, the prototypes, the best prototype of the movie, we're getting this later, it is Ed Helm's girlfriend. Yes. And not to squash my age the best, but now that we're getting older, we have friends that have gotten married. We know a couple, one in particular, not to say any names, say that, name. are, that are married to this girl, this Melissa girl. Don't forget your Rogaine. Rogaine. Check. And don't forget to use it. I can totally tell when you forget your hair just looks thinner. And make sure to call me right when you get to the hotel, not like that conference in Phoenix. I had to wait two hours for you to call me. Yeah, I was the keynote speaker. I was late to the podium. Still? Yeah, you're totally right. I'm sorry. And just the, the fact he says, you know, it's not worth a fight. Like, why are you having a fight? Because you want to hang out with your buddies. You married the wrong girl. And it's just such a great performance by her. Uh, Galifianakis launched his career here. He was known in comedy circles, but this really made him... Oh, 100%. The A-lister. From Out Cold to a baller. Right. And, dude, and, by the way, shout out Out Cold. Great freaking movie, and he was hilarious in that. But to your point, that was six years at least before, because I think, yeah, Out Cold's like 02, 03. So. Yeah. And he also the almost wasn't even going to be in this movie. Didn't want to audition. We'll get to it later. Yeah. Uh, but Bradley Cooper was already, you know, somewhat of a star. He'd done some stuff. But, like, Bradley Cooper capitalized on this the most because he is one of the most popular actors of the 2000 teams, right? 15, 16, yeah, 17. Yeah, I mean, he just this. also got nominated for whatever award for his role in Maestro. He's killing it. Uh, directed by Todd Phillips, our boy. Uh, third one we've done. $35 million budget, $467 million in the box office. Oh That's a banger. Todd Phillips obviously loves Bradley Cooper, too, because they've partnered up on a... Yeah. Of films. Um, the second one actually made more money. I think that was just like everyone wanted to well, see right, the second the one. Up, yeah. 100%. And uh, it sold 8.6 million DVDs the first week. Not money in sales, 8.6 so so million DVD, DVDs. Of a DVD, dude. which back then Blu ray was just brand bucks, new. Right? So, I'm, so we'll just say, I'm saying DVD was like 14. Phil will say 15 for easy. So numbers, you know. Woo! I mean, yeah, you're. He, that's, uh, they ripped off a lot of those people because no one uses those anymore. Yeah, Roger I, I, Ebert. I was one of those people, by the way. Your boy, Raj, three and a half stars. He loved it. He, he doesn't like raunchy. He doesn't like any of this, you know, immature comedy, which this movie has a lot of. But three and a half stars. Can we tip our hat, everyone, to Roger Ebert for that one? Love that. Good job. Good job. Any final thoughts before we get to the categories here? No, let's get into it. Best scene... Uh, I love the drive to Vegas. It is fantastic. Getting to know the characters. Alan is just out of control. The idea that Phil is drinking already on the way to the mm -hmm. bachelor party in Vegas where it's free drinks and they're going to be partying all night. He he gets out of school. He starts drinking. Just Which, love that trope. By the way, that I can relate to that because... <clears throat> Phil moved. Excuse me. Uh, because, no, literally because every time we go to Missouri to a friend of ours... Uh, uh, lake house, his parents' lake house. Once you, because in we live in Illinois, and and once you hit Missouri, you can drink in the cars on the drivers not drinking. So every time we hit that line, stopping at that gas station, getting some brews, and uh, hitting well, the, off. the film move is driving and drinking in the state that you're not allowed to, right? Correct, they're in yes. a convertible, which is crazy that Stu's actually drinking too. Props to him. That is, he's trying to fit in. That right? is a very uncharacteristic. Thing yeah, it to is. Call. Um, just the guys getting to know Alan, like you know, because when when he hops in the car originally at the school. Which the great quote is, "I'm not supposed to be within 300 yards of a school," which is 200. Just, you know, I thought. Uh, yeah. Okay. A, ca <laughs> a casual, a casual uh, sex offender joke there. Do you have to park so close? You shouldn't be here. Why is that, Alan? I'm not supposed to be within 200 feet of a school. What? Or Chuck E. Cheese. Bitch. We're gonna get into that age the worst. Um, just he's like, who? Who is this guy? He's like, I I'm Alan. I bet you four times. Who's this? It's Alan. Tracy's brother. I met you like four times. Oh, yeah. How you doing, man? You met him four times. He was a pretty noticeable He says, dude. oh, yeah, how's it going? Yeah, how's it going? Uh, but just, am I good on the right? Fucking 
semi truck. Am I right over there, Alan? Yeah, you're good. Him trusting Alan, which is crazy. Right. But getting to know him, uh, the masturbating on the airplane quote yeah. is amazing. You know, thanks a lot, Bin Laden. It's not illegal. It's frowned upon, like masturbating on an airplane. I'm pretty sure that's illegal, too. Yeah, maybe after 9-11 where everybody gets so sensitive. Thanks a lot, Bin Laden. Just cracks me up every time. And then the gas station when he's filling up the car and the old guy's like, that is a sweet ride. Don't even look at it. Yeah, don't, Keep don't walking. You know. He says, don't touch yeah. it. Yeah. And then as they pan yeah. off to uh, <laughs> Phil and Doug talking, he goes and says, uh, what does he say? He's like, uh, I'll beat it. He's like, I'll beat it. Elderly. He's, like, he's, he's a little out there, but he's just like, he's, he's pretty funny though, isn't he? He's like, is he all there yeah. mentally yeah. or... He's like, yeah, he's just, you know. He, he probably shouldn't gamble or drink too much. He's like a fucking gremlin. He's got a rule book. Um, uh, my favorite part of the scene, though, is the It's Always Sunny style conversation they have in the checkout line about the bartender. Yes. You know, or the bellhop, he says. You right. know, he, Yo, she can fuck a bellhop on a Carnival Cruise Line. So you can't go to Vegas, but she can fuck a bellhop on a Carnival Cruise Line. Uh, she was a bartender? And if you must know, he didn't even come at her. And you and believe, believe that? that. Hey, first of all, he was a bartender. And if you must know, he didn't even come inside her. And you believe that? <laughs> yes, because she's grossed out by semen. Uh, yeah, I do believe that because she's grossed out by semen. That'll be a third. Yeah. <laughs> like, and then the fucking cashier is just like, what is going on here? I don't know. If he has not been in that situation where you have, I'm not saying that type of thing. My not, not that wife not. has got come inside by a fucking bar. Bar, a bartender? Um, no, thank, not. thank you. Uh, that's I was trying. Erica! Not to, I, was, I was trying not to, you know, get to that for you. But no, I'm more saying that when you've been in a public place having a conversation that is definitely quote not safe for work conversation, yeah. and people you know people are hearing this, and you just are in your head, you just don't care, and you just keep having that yeah. conversation, and you just laugh in your head because you know these people just heard all that. It's very it's super funny. badass, right? The conversation they have before school. Very similar, it, right? you guys one not, of our favorite scenes, I mean, have you guys not done that? Because I mean, that's happened. We to have. Me. We know you have, Ray. I mean, but, come on. Yeah. You, you do that shit. That Daily. Is. The next scene I have is the aftermath of the night when they wake up. I, I do all of the scene on the roof, but like the aftermath, the way that's shot when uh, Stu wakes up, and the, the way the camera is just showing how disoriented he is. Fucking love that. Um, just looking at the room, you know, you got the fucking chicken, then you get the tiger, you get Alan refusing to put pants on. He's like, I can't think of pants in a time like this. Uh, him answering the cell phone. Yeah. <laughs> oh, this is Doug's phone. Like eight minutes, eight yeah. seconds into the conversation. Hey, you know, he says, hey, Alan. Oh, you know, like that, like, like <laughs> obvious of what's like, you're right there by the air conditioner. Hey, Ray. And you're, he's just like, oh, I'm like, oh, hey there. And he's, you're just like, damn it, Ray. He's got legs like his mother. And that leads into the brunch with Carlos the baby. Um, him Who's jerking, him jerking off Carlos the baby. I know it does not. It's pretty, pretty weird. But uh, just how happy you he is. You giggle, um, but you know it's wrong. Hey Phil, look. I'm feeling kind of drowsy. Don't do drugs without me. He's jacking his little weenus. Not at the table, Carlos. <laughs> uh. I didn't just giggle. That was hilarious. Yeah, and something they could never do now, not even close. Nope. Just how hungover he is and everyone trying to figure out. And, and Stu's just like, I don't even remember going to dinner. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> They're well, going he, through he the needs, night. He like, doesn't need help with that. Show him how to do that. He's like, you know, there was a 12-hour window we could have lost them. And they go through the first three things, which leads them up to, like, midnight. Yeah, right. And then Stu's just like, I don't even remember fucking going to dinner. It's the first <laughs> thing they did, which it's uh, just classic. And the last thing I have is the wedding scene, the ending. Um, you get the, the bartender joke from Alan. It was a real pleasure meeting you. Fuck off. I'm thinking about getting my bartender's license. Suck my dick. No, thank you. You know, I'm I'm actually trying to get my bartender's license. Yeah. <laughs> the fight, the, you know, the argument between Stu and the girlfriend. And then you get the Dan Band performance, plus the pictures. Oh, you be a nympho, I'll be a nympho. Got the magic stick, I'm the love doctor. You Just, yeah. A great way to end off the comedy. Yeah. Um, it's funny because that's a good, like, probably seven-minute clip. Like, yeah. six-minute clip. But I agree that's great easily wedding. one of the best, great. The best things. It doesn't movie. limp home. It, it fucking it comes in your face, as the Carlos the Baby would have, but he didn't have come. What do you guys have? 
Um, I've got, I like those Todd Phillips little bits where he's always finding ways to get into his movie. So when they get in the elevator and he's going down on the girl yep. and he's like, we're going up, what's going up, yeah, we're going up. <laughs> and you see Doug's face just like, it's just called a satchel. Indiana Jones wears one. We're going up guys. Yeah, that's perfect. Even though he was technically going down. Correct. Yeah. <laughs> um, I also liked, uh, Ed Helms finding out he got married. Congratulations, dude. You got married. This, this can't be happening. Oh, God. Look at that. Uh, um, Eddie, that character. That character is so good, dude. So hilarious. Hey, this is the wildest, craziest <laughs> man I've ever seen in my life. Man, you're the crazy. <laughs> Look at these guys. How are you, my friend? <laughs> Look at this guy. You're fucking crazy. What's going on, man? I know some sick people in my life. This guy is the craziest, wildest bastard I ever met in my life. Oh, this man. guy? This guy is out of his mind. What's mm. going on, you fucking oh, oh. crazy motherfucker? He's such an asshole to the girl, too. He's like, go get it, go get it. Yeah, <laughs> Slap yeah, yeah right, right, right. All tits, no brains. Um, the taser scene, when he's like, guys, um, who's the actor, the cop you don't like? Rob Riggle. Rob Riggle, he's like, you guys, you don't want to be like these guys on this bench. Loserville. Right. Um, and then the, he kicks the phone. There you go. Or the payphone call he makes while he's in jail. Like, yep. yeah, well, we got confident in either room, hotel. Yeah, it's great. Yeah, it's We're just spot, totally way. relaxed. To be honest, we're in jail. Yeah. I'd have to we're say, just calling each other. We're trying to mix it yeah. up. Even though no one else called the other, anyone yeah. else's spouse. To be honest, I'd have to say, because I agree with you, that's easily one of my favorite scenes, but I'd have to say the hardest I laughed in that entire scene. Is when the little chubby kid shoots Zach Galifianakis right in between the freaking eyes with that taser, well, and Zach the way that he's just zombie, just like, like those eyes are just wanting to kill him. Yeah, and the kids are just like the little knows. girls, just like. Ah! How about you, big man? Come on up here. There you go. That's the stuff. Like the intensity, D thousand volts, little man. Don't be afraid to ride the lightning. No! No! In the face! In the face! No! <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, I don't know, dude. I just died. Like his look, and then the rest of the kids, except that because he remember he's like, I have the tiger. Yeah, right there. Get we it. actually have a taser on set. Uh, so stay tuned. Make sure you're watching this to the finish line. Yeah, we're gonna taste. Someone's Ray's getting tased. Oh, uh, well, they didn't tell me, so guess who's getting tased? Me. Good, good one, guys. I am. Also, uh, Mike Tyson kind of getting introduced to Phil Collins. Oh, no. i waiting for this moment for all my life. Oh, no. Oh, Jesus. Um, then going kind of back to back with Stu's song, and he's like, but even if he's been murdered by crystal meth tweakers, well then we're shit out of luck. Yeah. But if he's been murdered by crystal meth tweakers, well then we're shit out of luck. <laughs> um, Alan caught peeing in the pool, and then Phil being like, I've never seen a more beautiful, elegant creature. Majestic. And then he, and then he just starts <laughs> humping yeah. the tiger. You know, I just have to say, I have never seen a more beautiful, elegant, just regal creature. Check it out. Dude, dude, fuck this tiger. Oh my god. It's awful. Oh, man. And he's like, What's wrong? Mike, when Mike Tyson asking you what's wrong with you, Something's wrong At that with point you. of his life, too, yeah, yeah. It's, uh, it's an issue. Um, Alan running the blackjack blackjack table and kind that of having epic, that, dude. yeah, all the math equations pop up in his head. Especially because remember when the earlier in the movie when Doug's just like, yeah, you got to be smart to do that, and he's just we like, we should work in teams. Yeah, yeah, we should work in teams. Who wants, uh, who I wants to be my spotter? spotter. <laughs> who wants to be my spotter? Um, it's then, illegal. And then I've got uh, last. I, I love that band. Old school has got them. That may be their best performance. Hey, I'm going to live forever. I'm going to learn how to fly. Fly! Take it to the candy <laughs> shop. Yeah. Um, he's like, like a lollipop. And then when he flicks off, he's, he's like, you know, like, what, what is that? He's line? fucking with the old lady. Yeah, right, what, what does he say right? when he flicks them off? Because like, he, like, he gives them the, the, the finger right, and the old, the old couple's just like, like appalled. Yeah, no, but those are my funniest scenes. I mean, there's a ton you could pick out here. It's... It is so jam-packed as a comedy. 
Um, I have, uh, for me, I love when uh, Mr. Chow, when they first, he gets first introduced. just And it's so great because he just literally just shows his little... Jumps out. His little, his little spring roll and just that fucking Asian bush. You, you fuck, fuck on me? You fuck on me? Yeah, I, fuck on me? I mean... What, what does Alan say? He, he says something about his people. He says, what, what does Alan say? I love Godzilla. Or no. Yeah. <laughs> what does he say? Something like. So I, it's something about Godzilla. I hate Godzilla too. Oh no, he's like, that's it. He's like, I hate Godzilla too. And then he just fucking like, smacks him with the... He destroys cities. Somebody's gonna fuck on you. We're on your side. I hate Godzilla. I hate him too. I hate him. He destroys cities. <laughs> Come on, I'll give you some pants. <laughs> <laughs> That's definitely one of my favorite scenes. Um, the, the when they go back to the chapel, just the whole thing with that. I mean, with Eddie, I don't know that yeah. that scene just drives. It's so funny for me. Um, and then I also really like when they are watching the film with Mike Tyson, and then every time one of the guys say something that they're just like, oh, like it's basically the opposite of what they yeah. do, and like they say something, and then all of a sudden it pans to the. To the security camera of them doing the opposite. Kissing in the pool. All this shit. And then, yeah, like, oh, uh, was Bradley Cooper just humping the shit out of the yeah. tiger? Like, all so this. Great. I mean, that, that stuff. And then also, when the tiger wakes up, that's also a scene that I love. Yeah, destroying the car. Just, yeah, because they're just driving. They're all, they're just, they're freaked out and they're just trying to get everything together. Then all of a sudden, you see that shittily animated CGI tiger just like. And they were and supposed then, to armor all the tires so no uh, sand seeps in. Yeah. But now they have a tiger destroying the interior. It's similar to it's a little Tommy Boy esque, right? Uh huh. In terms of just oh, no, the destruction I, I, honestly, of the car. I'd be willing to bet that Todd. Or, uh, Todd oh, Rose, that deer fucked up that car way more than that tiger did. True. No, but I'm saying I th- I personally do think that he may have gotten that from that. You know, just yeah. I mean, you know, not inspiration. Like, not George, yeah, I'm saying not George ripped it off clearly, but yeah, inspiration for sure. All right, what's age the best? I have Alan's speech. Uh, it's a great speech, you know. The wolf pack? Like, the wolf pack. You want to give me the speech about us being a wolf pack here? Uh, Running around. Uh, searching for... <laughs> thanks. Stripping, uh, searching for strippers and cocaine. Four of us wolves running around the desert together in Las Vegas looking for strippers and cocaine. Um, and for me personally, the, the way he starts it with a... How about that ride in? Hello. How about that ride in? I guess that's why they call it Sin City. <laughs> like, why yeah. does he put that on the paper? And I actually that did a epic. speech at my sister's wedding, my little sister's wedding. None of the guys for his for her husband wanted to do it. They're all cowboys. They're all hammered. So I'm like, someone's got to give a speech besides my, my other sister. So I went up there and did one. And I was fucking hammered. Uh, my suit was a little tight. My clothes, I wore my wedding suit, which I'd gained 20 pounds. So I started off with, because we're in Kingman. Kind of close to Vegas. How about that ride in? Haha, <laughs> it was great. I, I posed off that. I, I made a bunch of jokes about my Baby Gap clothes. Did you Did you get a letter in the mail from Todd Phillips and company? You've been legendary films about ripping off <laughs> yeah, plagiarism. Uh, yeah, <laughs> it was recorded by a few people, uh, but I just love the speech. Just the Blood Brothers thing with the knife. They're all just horrified. I make a toast. Oh, what? What do you got there? Oh, oh, yeah, oh, 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 fuck you! Yeah, how are you doing? Oh. Alan, when he has the Jagermeister, his walk. How happy he is. What do you got there, Alan? He's just like, oh, little Jägermeister. Hey, Jäger. Um, Yeah, it's not great. Uh, the blackjack scene is the best. It's really well shot. The music, all that. Phil flipping off the fucking cameras when he starts winning. And to be honest, that, that just, that. I think for me personally, especially now seeing where Todd Phil, especially with Joker, and where he's trying to go with his filmmaking, and especially his skill, like you said, Rob, this is our now third Todd Films movie. Yeah. And like we did Road Trip, which is 2000. And then this is 09. And I'm just saying, I understand, you know, that's a, obviously a huge jump. It's a whole decade. But it just shows the development of how good of a director he started to turn out to literally become an Academy Award winning director. Right. You know, that's so. a legit scene. Uh, the Dan Band age is the best. I just, that's the, my favorite performance of all the movies that he's been in. He's been in Scar- Starsky and If Hodge. you were at a wedding, would you recognize the Dan Band song coming yes. on? Yes, fact. Yes. Fact. I had a debate with my fiance They're about good. this. They're I was good. like, we need no. to have at our wedding one Dan Band song come on. Uh, and she's like, no one will know what you're talking no. about. And I'm like, 
But we want to have the actual Dan Bam. I was, I, was say, that's, I was literally about to say, that is my epic goal, to have enough money when I get married, if and whenever I do, to have the Dan Bam play my wedding. I mean, dude, they, like... Because you can live old. They, They'd be worth they it. They do. That. They, that's their fucking job, man. I mean, Can you imagine but... if the Dan Bam played the Super Bowl, though? Like, as, as much as I hate most Super Bowl performances, the Dan Bam at the Super Bowl, dude, I would, I would just... Record that, watch it fucking twenty times. Just uh, it, I, I agree. I think it would be a huge hit. To be honest, great. I, I think it would be. They would never do it. The average, of course, like ESPN and all like mainstream media would be like, "Damn, band!" But then all of a sudden they go on and people like, because let's be real, the amount of people who've seen all these movies that those guys have been in, would they would have been one in a solid probably three to four really really popular movies. Mm-hmm. This is probably the most popular one. You know, like they're in Wedding Crashers and you know things like that. But I mean, I don't know. I feel like a lot of people would end up really being like. Holy shit! Wait! Oh my God! That's that! Whoa! Or once Take it got announced, the candy shop. Yeah. Uh, also, had the girlfriend from hell. We talked about it a little bit, but it's just <clears> age the best. best. Yes, because now as we're getting older, we know those guys. We know those that are married to Karens. those girls. Karens and she's the worst. It's she, have, a great performance. Do you not by have her. one friend that you just really do not like their wife? This you is got, like beyond do not like. This is like I can't be friends with this person no, anymore not because. Like that, really. None of your friends. Not my wife. And I'm not even talking like oh, good friends. Good. She's she's cool. Well, um, I like her more. Her than performance you, so. is his performance <laughs> is thanks. Her performance is amazing though. Uh, I also have the two made up songs, uh, the best friend oh, song, and I think we're due. Yeah. Due date. Kind of get it. So. Karaoke with Rob. But it'll. You are the wind beneath my wings. All right. How'd you know? Um, I was going to say that shit. Okay. And then we're going to find my best friend, Doug, and give him a best friend hug. Doug! Doug, Doug, Doug. Yeah! <laughs> wait, 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 wait. And a best friend, Doug, 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 Doug. All right. Dude, can we get you singing some Creed? That was Creed-ish. Yeah, thank yeah. you. So. Oh. I love it. Hey, shout out Creed. Ray's ready. <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you got for Age the Best? <clears throat> I actually, Age the Best was tough here because there's a laundry list of Age the Worst in this movie. Let's be real. Um, but as far as Age the Best, Ken Jeong, Mr. Chow, guy's epic. I mean... Oh, he's only blown up like... He, like, he may have been something around this movie. Yeah. And he, it's like he used... All of a sudden, after this movie, you seem to see him... Commercials everywhere. everywhere. I mean, movies... TV every, shows. TV shows yep. I mean, guys dominating the game. And then also Bradley Cooper. I mean, he's come out with some epic films that I've been big fans of. American I mean, Sniper, I remember dude. watching, yeah, American Sniper, Limitless. I mean, I'm trying to think. Did you guys Silver I, Lines Playbook? Did you guys Did you guys legitimately know who he like really was before this came out? Well, Wedding Crashers was great. In. Yeah. So that. Oh, was that was your right. right. You're right. You're right. That was his definite kickoff. Yeah. No, no, no. But he was. Sad. He didn't have charisma like he has in this movie. No, he but no, 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 no. I apologize. To your point, though, this is a movie star role. Right. But but I but movie. but you know I could say that he went from a nobody in that movie became something and this put him to superstar. Yes, for sure. sure. The hair. Yep. His hair's great. Oh, his hair's amazing. Is my hair cool like Phil's? <laughs> yes. Classic yes, it is. Phil. Yes. <laughs> no, you're Alan and Hangover too. Is what you are. I guess true. Yeah. Yeah, you got the beard. Everybody, let's just put this out there. We're all let's be realistic here. All three of us are Allens in our own way. So. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Let's just put that in that way. We're the three best Allens that anyone could have. We're the three best Allens. What do you have to age the race? Burst? Age the word? Other words? Age the best. I was going to say the the best. Um, I said burst, actually. Oh, did you? Okay. Really We've been drinking, folks. Issues. Um, honestly, I would say the movie itself, which I can go both ways, but I think the movie itself, because like we were talking about earlier, this realistically being the possible, like 09 being really the end of the true golden era of amazing comedies and just the no rules comedies. Correct. Right? Yes, correct. And I think no that rules. this, I think that, I don't know. I think that this just sort of just sits on its own peak, even though obviously it became a trilogy, but I just love the way that this movie sort of sticks out. Cause it's sort of just like star Wars, for instance, when the original star Wars came out, you, it could have just been its own movie as this easily could have just, it never, not, no one never could have probably should have been its own movie. But this one. For not for their pockets. The second but, one's good. Lame. But either way, I'm just saying. That I think the movie itself. Um, I also think that with with, <clears throat> I, I'm gonna have to counter this man on our next topic. Well, and I think Mike Tyson also aged the best because this also I think sort of was a kickoff to his renaissance mm-hmm. into where he's become more. He's in a way he's not everywhere to what we were talking about before with Ken, but 
Mike Tyson isn't he's he, he's he pops up in a lot of places. He was he's missing some for like seven roads. years. Yeah, now he's back. Well, yeah. no, but I'm saying I think that the, I think that this was that beginning of him coming back to, into the spotlight of just I he, like that. You know, just sort of just coming out and just being this. You know, he's and now. I mean, dude, in the weed business now, you know, he's he's yeah. killing it. So. Yeah, he had a cartoon, right? The, he, it's still. I think it's still going. Yeah, if I'm not wrong, go. an adult swim. Uh, so. Rylan, what age the worst? Hangover in general. I was researching this movie, and there's a lot of haters out there. I mean, there's from anything from hating on kind of the frat boy persona, the the non PC, some of the woman, sh- you know, women shaming stuff like that. The woman character arc in this movie is very bad. <laughs> yeah, hundred percent. Um, also, Vegas. I feel like Vegas. You don't hear of like like when I was growing up, it was like, oh yeah, let's go to Vegas. Maybe it was kicked off by this movie. Um, but you don't hear about that as much as like a hot destination. Now it's like let's go to Miami, let's go different Dude, places. It's, it's very it's commercial. Spread out. Now. Well, it, you know it's crazy yeah. the fact that you're saying this is because you're 100 percent right. I mean honestly, let's, let's really think about this. When you were middle school to high school, you thought 21, going to Vegas. That's like that was just a thing. And then yeah. as you got closer to 21, I mean for me, everybody I'd never been to Vegas. You know, or I'm sorry, I went there when I was in seventh grade. What the fuck does that mean? You, know? you got I mean, wild then, didn't you? Oh yeah, wild <laughs> na- buck nasty with them. And strippers. Age the worst. Also, Phil's voice mail answering machine. I know we touched on it already. Um, Kanye West. Who? He's got the Vegas, <laughs> he's got the Vegas entry scene song, which great song. Wait till I get my money. Um, but but I mean, I, can I counter though? I mean, I understand that a man has age the worst, but his music is not. No, nah, he kind of has some shitty songs now. Boom. No, 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 I don't no, want to no. talk about all his music no. shitty, so. No, no, no. No, his no, no. Th- In this movie, that song is not shitty. No, I agree. That's what I'm saying. So, I, I, I mean, age the worst. Okay. <laughs> ding. Uh, music not, though. Uh, no, his music fucking blows now. <laughs> um, and he doesn't have music now. He sucks. His old music. Because he's aged the worst. Uh, Crazy Girlfriends, I have his aging the worst. Because... You know, why would I, I don't want to say the word best and crazy mm. together. Mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm oh. sticking with age the worst. And then man purses, man bags. The fact that it was a joke in a hangover movie and I go to Miami for a bachelor party and I see dudes in the masses with little like bags and satchels. and. So how's that not age the worst though? Because it's fucking like, a thing now. It sucks. It's weird. Like it. He doesn't like it. I don't, I don't like, like it. it. No, I don't like it either, but I'm, I would say that I was age the best because... I mean, look at all these douchebag NBA players and shit walking in with their little satchels and shit. Jerry, Jerry had it in Seinfeld that one episode. Jerry, you forgot your purse. Oh, thanks. Hey, Sylvia, look at Jerry here prancing around in his coat with his purse. <laughs> you hated it. It's a purse. I'm wearing a purse. <laughs> uh, Ray, what do you got for Razor Worst? Um, again, I know. Again, I said I, I teased it earlier, but I, I'm going with the movie as well. Because I'm going, I told you, I'm going, I'm playing both sides for this. The reason I'm telling you all this is because I'm playing both sides so that I always come out on top. Because, honestly, because I, I do think the movie did age the best. Treason. For what I said, but I do also think it aged the worst because to what you were saying. It's always you shit-ass millennials and fucking really You're a millennial. Vision. Well, and, the, and even worse, the Gen Zers. It's mostly the Gen Zers. Fuck you. Because sitting here whining about PC this, PC that. Are you picking a bone with an entire yeah, generation uh, of people right I've now? That a, may be watching our video. I'm kidding. We don't want them as fans. So if you're, Gen I've Z, picked you're a bone on. from day one with Gen Z. So yeah. If you're gonna follow, if, if you're Gen Z and you want something to follow, follow Rob's TikTok. He's got some great dances going on. So. Okay, <laughs> that's not in there. Can I do my thing? Can I do my thing? <laughs> I'm sorry. Great. Another age the worst roofing people. I know it's never been great, but the Bill Cosby thing was post. This movie, you know, him coming out. Fact. And my question is, have you guys ever been roofied? No. Well, yeah, that one time I drank a beer over here. All right, <laughs> nice. So, a quick story time with Rob for you. Story time. It's not about him getting roofied here, which is a lie. So, this is back when I was 19 or 18 years old. I had a cousin who was a year or two younger, went to East, and I went to a party at his, his buddy's house and rich part of St. Charles. I knew nobody. I'm getting fucked up. I'm smoking weed. But I only had like five beers, smoked a little bit of weed. I saw my buddy Kyle Fogarty. Couple bong hits, a cheeseburger. Okay. Shout out Kyle Fogarty. I saw him. 
Couple uh, strikeouts. Before I saw him, a girl walks down the stairs stumbling. Can't even walk. She's got a giant, like, chalice kind of cup. And pimp, full, a pimp chalice, mix, will you? Mix, mix, mix drink. I'm like, you should not drink this. I take her drink. I drink her drink. I chug her drink. It was tasty. It was roofied. I didn't know this at the time. Drink the drink. See my buddy Kyle Fogarty. I'm like, yo, dude, fuck. I don't know anyone here. I'm going to get my blunts. We're going to smoke a blunt. Talk to some people. Ten minutes passes. I go to my car. Get my blunts. I wake up ten hours later. This is like eight in the morning, ten in the morning. I'm in the ditch. My side door open. The blunts next to me. A dog licking my face. A lady walking her dog. I was roofied. I took the girl's drink. Someone roofied that girl. I, in turn, got roofied. And woke up, passed out. And by the way, everybody, when he's saying the dog was licking his face, you know what he's talking about. My chach. But that's not good. That's not good. That's not good. That's not yeah. bad. There we go. Uh, okay. But uh, yeah, so I've been roofied before. Because he put peanut butter there, by the way. So. Uh, it's a great story. <laughs> Fuck you. All right, casting what ifs. Uh, Lindsay Lohan was cast as Jade. They thought she was too young. I'm glad they did not have her, and Heather Graham is amazing in this movie. I had a hard time even recasting I think Heather Lindsay, Graham. I think I think she would be good at it now, like her age now, because so because she like turned like if you I don't know if you've seen her, but like she's turned her health around and looks better now and everything. So, but I, I agree. That would have been bad. Well, no, bad. but I'm saying I agree with you at the other time for sure. Jack Black turned down Alan. Mistake on his end of turning it down. I'm glad he did. As much as I love Jack Black, I actually considered him before I read this as a recast, just because how many other people could play that. Goofy, bearded, chubby dude. Him. Yeah. Uh, Paul Rudd turned down Phil. I don't know if it's he probably, quite has the, the douchebaggery, though, because like I love the fact how douchey Phil is and how much of a, a bad influence he is, and Phil is not. What if, though, he were to take his character from Knocked Up and turn it up like... Not enough charisma. No, no, I'm saying, but I'm saying turn it up like yeah. multiple notches. He would need to take his actual role model character there you go. to, yes. to uh, rob uh, that's a better you're right. douche that's, it up. That's, yeah, that's, yeah, you're right. that's, a, that's even a better copy right there. Uh, Jeremy, oh, Venti. Yeah, right. yeah. Venti is large. Uh, Jeremy Piven turned down Stu, which on the outside, Jeremy Piven is way too swag to play Stu. He could have always been Phil. But the one role I can say that I actually understand this is is Seinfeld when he's playing George. I just came from the podiatrist. Yeah, I got something wrong with my foot. I got a little gangrene. They're probably going to have to amputate. Mm. That is where I could see him possibly pulling off the stew. But I, I'm, I'm glad that we got the stew we did. And we're going to get into recasting. It was hard to recast because I think this movie is I've fucking perfectly recast. Uh, you guys have any casting what ifs? That was really all I could find. So. Jonah Hill was on the list. Jake Gyllenhaal. I even saw that they almost thought about the guy who played Tarzan. Uh, was a casting what if for the movie, which is kind of wow. crazy. I'm blanking on his name. So what what characters were they supposed to be what if? For? Jonah Hill was obviously supposed to be Alan. Okay. Um, I, I'm actually blanking on what Jake Gyllenhaal and Tarzan were supposed Jake to be. Jake Gyllenhaal was supposed to be Doug. Doug. Okay. Doug. Was it Doug? I think Doug. Oh, but with Alan, that's, the, that's, that's the, switch, nice the switch from Jonah Hill to Zach Galifianakis came from Todd Phillips deciding that he didn't want to go with a younger brother. He thought it would be funnier yes. to do an older brother who was still living at home, et cetera, which I think added to it big time. And I think Jonah Hill could have crushed it. Uh, recasting couch, toss it to my man Rylan. So I actually have a, a few here. So I'm going to quick kind of dive into these. Um, I think it would have been kind of funny. Obviously, I'm going to throw Will Ferrell in, though, so we'll start there. <laughs> Shocker, Will everybody. Breaking news, Will Ferrell. Will Ferrell is Stu, Vince Vaughn is Phil, and Jonah Hill is Alan. I mean, those are some three fucking best you friends. You said Vince Vaughn is Stu? I can see that. No, Vince Vaughn is or, Phil. Phil, Phil, I'm sorry. Okay. Yeah, I can see the that. The suave, yeah, you know, right, right, right. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I also am going to kind of go back a little bit. I don't know if you guys ever remember seeing some movie called, like, Get Short or Big Short or something like that, but John Travolta for Phil. Mm. Okay. Danny DeVito for Alan. Oh, I love it. I love and that. And Gene Hackman for Stu. Gene Hackman. I know it's a little weird. Yeah, yeah, just in terms of But if of you've the seen some movies, they've actually been in a bunch of movies together. Um, duos of them and trios. Um, and then last, I thought they would be kind of funny, would be um, finding a way to get the Happy Madison crew in there somehow. Um, I didn't really Sandler. dive in there too yeah, much, yeah. but they always... Yeah, they can redo it. Yeah. Right? I mean, honestly, I the only thing I really thought of was just being um, with the Broken Lizard crew from, you know, Super Troopers. Just them breaking it out with, you know, guy who plays Farva being Alan. And then you can just name, and, you know, and those guys, they can just break it down the rest of those characters. 
But otherwise, I mean, to be honest, I really did just love this cast because they work so well off each other that, I mean... Who could who could have recasted uh, Mr. Chow? Did anybody come up with a recast um, of Mr. Chow? I think I, I, think I, I, I was honestly thinking about that. And I was thinking maybe something not. something along the lines of like uh, your guy, the Mad TV guy, yeah, the, yeah, Bobby, Lee. yeah no, Bobby Lee, yeah, Bobby Lee, yeah, there it is, that's that, the one. That, that, so that'd be, yeah, well, he'd be pretty, he'd be different, but he'd be that's racist. <laughs> but uh, <laughs> all right, I, I got a he great, said it now. I got us. a great docket for you guys. You ready for this? Sean William Scott for Phil. Yeah, Todd Phillips callback. Yeah. He'd been out of the limelight a bit. Love Sean William Scott. You can't go wrong there. Alan. Uh, Danny McBride, I felt was too easy, so I'm not going to have him. How about Steve well, thanks Zahn? thanks for mentioning him. How about Steve Zahn? <laughs> As who? As Alan. Alan. I lo- Dude, get, grow out a beard. Steve Zahn's amazing. Steve Zahn definitely has Why do I know that name? He's, he's, he's from, uh, it's, uh, well, he's from uh, Saving, Saving Silverman. Silverman. What's his character? Saving Silverman. He's the one that he's the... Oh, the he, friend. The, he's the yeah. one that he's the... Steve he's Zahn, the, high-pitched start- voice, kind of almost like a Charlie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, love him. Stu, I have Steve Carell. Give me some Steve Carell, dude. He's like perfect that. for that fucking role. Yeah. Uh, Doug, I have Edward Norton or Jake Gyllenhaal. You said Jake Gyllenhaal was... And I know it's a, a small role for a big star, but, I mean, Edward Norton... No, you have to have that guy be a no-name. I get it. But I I just, it. I it'd be it. nice to have a, a better name there. Ed Norton can, almost looks like Doug a little bit. That's the thing. Uh, Tracy, that's Doug's fiance, Liv Tyler. Who looks like Doug? Liv Tyler. <laughs> Liv Tyler's for great who? for Tracy. Okay. Yeah. Who I was, looks I was, just like Doug's wife? But she's also good. Uh, <laughs> Melissa, this is a great one. Amanda Peet. Now, I don't want to replace... I don't want to place, replace Melissa. She is perfect as that bitch-ass girlfriend. But Amanda Peet, going back to Saving Silverman, also great at that role. Fact. I think she's the only one that could have pulled this off equal to what the actress... Did you guys by chance see the movie Waiting? Yeah. Yes. The actress that has Tourette's. I always just thought to myself, yeah. I'm like, the way that Melissa blows up, just, just like, like crazily at him. I appreciate that. But I think I'd rather you just wash the fucking dishes and shut the fuck up! Fucking psycho babble bullshit asshole! I don't know, I thought that that, that that actress, the way that she played that character, that crazy waitress in that movie, would be good. And then also, I was thinking maybe Brandy, who played uh, in uh, Joe Dirt. Yeah, be a good, uh, yeah, Brittany, Brittany, um, yeah. would be, would I, be I was, a good Jade. I was thinking, I was thinking Jade because, because his cause nice Doug's it. wife is like on another level from her because she's beautiful. So I was thinking more Jade, beautiful. For her, yeah, uh, I also have uh, for Jade Shannon Elizabeth. Yeah, definitely. Um, just call back to American Pie a little bit. No, um, but I think it would work though because like not, the, not as old, well. well but, no, but well, no, but I'm saying the age wise, I think that would probably work. She maybe I think probably Shannon Elizabeth is a little bit older than her, but yeah, than the actress of Jane. But my last one you're gonna love, Black Doug. I recast as Dave Chappelle. <laughs> give me work. some Chappelle. That would work well. Like that 2009. Give me some Chappelle. Black yeah, Doug. You're not getting much from Mike Apps. He's okay. I mean, but give me give me some Dave Chappelle love. Dave Chappelle. Love. How, how would you think Ice Cube would be? He's too hardcore. Too hardcore. Yeah, too too hardcore. All right, internet research. Uh, Todd Phillips' director's fee was six point five million dollars, and they didn't get the stars they wanted, so they asked him to take half as much. And he he said, "Give me points instead." He got sixteen percent of this movie instead of getting paid. He said, "Just invest in the movie." He made eighty million dollars on just this one. Great win for Todd Phillips. Good job. He already had the money, right? Like he didn't need it. Great, great move there. They improvised the jerking off scene. Alan did it with the doll originally. So they asked the parents, and they waited for the mom to go upstairs uh, in Vegas. And they're like, "Can we, can we jerk off your son in this movie?" <laughs> and the the husband's like, "Yeah, you gotta do it in thirty minutes, though. She's upstairs." Uh, Todd Phillips rewrote a big portion of the script. He added the tiger, the baby, the police cruiser, and Mike Tyson into the original script. Uh, filming only took fifteen days. Wow, which that's is that crazy. Is... And how much did you say was it? Three sixty-eight, something like that, that they made. Uh, or 468? 467 million. That yeah. is, dude, 15. Oh my God. That is, talk about a day. They killed Thank it. Thank you. Good job, Todd Phillips. Yeah. That is did. a day's work. Uh, the missing tooth from Ed Helms was uh, really missing. They had yeah, no, hey, yeah, that's, a, that's an actual He had an implant tooth. as a teenager and Correct. they took it out and they had to re put something else for the office because yeah. he was still shooting the office during this. Right. Uh, what do you guys got before I, I take <laughs> I only years? had one thing and uh, it's not even actually part of Hangover 1, but I thought it was still interesting that in Hangover 2, one of the stuntmen almost died. And was seen by chance? Uh, I was with the monkey in the car. Oh, Bangkok. okay. Wow. 
Yeah. Um, I had that uh, Mike Tyson actually nailed the shit out of Zach Galifianakis. No shit. Yeah, Whoa. that was like like he he like yeah uh, like. I didn't read that. That's awesome. Yeah. Like a real punch. Not like a total real punch, but like Connected. like a Will Smith punch. Uh oh, Richard! <laughs> oh wow! Well, uh, definitely a little, bit more, a little bit more than that. But no, like I think I think I think he ended up hitting him a little bit more. Like, like he, they said in the scene, I think he ended up did hitting him a little bit harder than like they oh, expected. Not. Exactly. Uh, Alan's dick in the uh, picture where he's getting blown is actually a mold. Wasn't his actual dick. I was a little disappointed. It's definitely <laughs> pretty well endowed there. Uh, but, that the also, songs... but also that would also be considered pornography, which would buzz, but boost us up to an X rated. So it makes right. a little sense. It looked real. Uh, both songs are improvised. Both the uh, the three best friends song and then uh, D- um, Stu song. Which props to Stu to Ed Helms for singing that song. Improvised. Yeah. They had a piano there. Oh, let's see what you can do. It's a great song. I mean, it's, well, and it's to be honest, dude. especially with the with the. And then we're gonna find a best friend, Doug, and give him a best friend. Hit us with some dun, honesty. Dun. Uh, and the last one is the Galifianakis <laughs> improvised the Holocaust ring quote, which is one of my favorite quotes of the movie. Mm-hmm. They, they give a ring out of the Holocaust. <laughs> like that's like, improvised, dude. Like, like he was so like so ingrained in his character to make that stupid ass comment. Well, uh, and, well, and that's like what, it was a that's fucking second these, place. That's trophy. what for me makes comedies like. For me, some of the best acting around, because they just the way, especially when they improvise things like that, and when they when the other actors don't break character, right? Like that's laugh out loud kind of shit, man. I mean, that's I mean, it's just impressive. Uh, me. Weak link of the film, Ray. What do you got? Uh, definitely, I have uh, I have Doug, which is just I mean, in my, in my eyes, just obvious because it's just like yeah, he's de- even though the whole movie same. I I like him. He's okay in the beginning. He's in well, a lot. Though. It's he's crazy because the movie, the whole parents. movie revolves around the guy, but he sucks because yeah. he's not in it. So it's he's just like great. well, you know, uh, heat check award. I will tell you what I do, man. Two chicks at the same time, man. Uh, this is the Lawrence Award from Office Space. Uh, I have Chow. Jeffrey Tambor, which is uh, the father-in-law, Alan's dad, and Rachel Harris, which is the crazy girlfriend. Would you guys have any other nominees? I'm sure you do. I've got... Wait, who'd you say was your second one? Uh, Tambor, Alan's dad. Okay. The herpes comment. Sid Gardner. Um, I've got Ken Jeong. I also put Sid Gardner because some of his lines... I mean, every line he had in that movie was hilarious. I actually wrote him down here. Vegas, baby. He never walked from the table on a heater. <laughs> Um, that is by far one of the best. <laughs> That's amazing. Hi, uh, Alan. Put some pants on. You have weird legs. Yeah. He has his mother's legs. It's weird. Alan, I'm teasing. You have wonderful legs. They're way better than your mother's. Um, and then he's like, "You're taking a Prius to Vegas." Right. Um, and then you know the herpes comment. Enjoy the car. Remember to put the armor all all for the sand. Um, and then also a heat check. I kind of threw in there the two cops scene. Um, not up in here. I had the same thing, dude. The cops scene is so epic. He's dude. like, come here, pretty boy. No, not you, fat Jesus. Yeah, fat Jesus is by far. That is like, I laughed. Like, that was one of those things where immediately, like, it's like funny, funny. So it's not you, fat Jesus. It's, I don't know. It was just so unexpected <laughs> in theaters. I remember just laughing so hard at that. No, that was funny. Uh, what do you got, Ray? Uh, I have Mike Tyson. Um, I just think that like, every time he's on there, it just so like, he just sort of, it's like the, the allure of like, oh my God, it's Mike Tyson. Especially because... He is involved in the in the plot of the movie. You know them going to his house with the tiger. Like that's a pretty big plot scene with him. Um, and then I also have uh, Eddie from the wedding, uh, from when they got wet, uh, married. Like that whole like every time he's he, that whole time he's on there. He just like, Eddie dominated. He yeah, he dominates it. It's funny as hell, and it's it's I don't know. I think it's, we should have drawn a face tattoo. Who do we have the winner though? I have Rachel Harris. I think she just as the girlfriend from hell. I think she's just perfect. I'm gonna go Ken John. Mr. Chow. Yeah, right? Proud of the cops for me. I don't know. I just, there's just some. Cause it's I hate Rob things. Riggle, so I can't have him. Overacting award. Oh, so now they're going to think, I did it! I have Rob Riggle because I don't like him. Wow. He overacted. Well, he played so. a cop. Wow. Well, I don't like Excellent. him. Excellent. I actually had Bradley Cooper. Um, it was tough to kind of figure out an overacting award, but I was kind of finding some moments where, you know, he was a little extra. I, I didn't really want to pick somebody here, so I just felt forced. Right? Ed Helms for me, just because, I don't know, it's just... What the fuck is going on? Yeah, I don't know, there's just, yeah, there's he just... He says that a lot. There, it, I don't know, for just from beginning, when we meet him, with Melissa, the Ray World game thing, to him breaking up with her at the end, it's just character arc with, I don't know, there's just, 
He goes through many. It's basically starts from the song from the bottom. Now we here. <laughs> Uh, that's, probably, that's what it goes with them. Nitpicks. I got a lot of problems with you people. <laughs> now you're going to hear about it. Uh, the room should be much more than $4,200 a night, even in 2009. That's a fucking That villa. room that was ginormous. $10,000 a night. Uh, and also, why they even got the room, because if you've ever been to Vegas, which I have 20 times, 20 nights I've been to Vegas, you don't spend the money in the room. You're never in the room. You save that money for gambling. Which is what all those guys said. And they also, three of them slept on the floor. They only used one of the rooms. Doug slept in the bed, right? So, like, they did all this money to not be in the room, to destroy the room, and not even sleep in the beds because they didn't want to share beds. They were sleeping on the floor anyway, which is what you do in Vegas. Two guys usually aren't even in the room because they're gambling all night. Sneaking the tiger into the hotel, uh, that's just not going to happen. I mean, you can look at the Vegas shooter. Apparently, he, he snuck all those guns. But uh, guns are not, not a tiger. You know what I mean? You can't hide a tiger. You can hide guns in duffel bags. That tiger was not in a duffel bag. So, nitpick there. Um, they didn't check the roof originally. I know it's for pot and all that shit, but they saw the mattress. They were up on the roof originally. That makes the most sense to maybe check where you were at prior. They checked all these other times of, you know, where were we at? That's a big one. Speaking of villas... Bradley Cooper wasn't saving anybody any money on almonds. <laughs> because right. the second housekeeping got in there, they were getting charged. Uh, it did, uh, I'm sorry, but a 14 fucking jar of almonds, I think, was the least of their problems. <laughs> <laughs> it just shows how uptight Stu was. This is my favorite one, though. Uh, the, the no rehearsal dinner the night before. That's when rehearsal dinners are, are done, especially on a Sunday wedding. They go, you know, Saturday night. When's the rehearsal dinner? It wasn't Friday. It's funny you say because I never thought about that because I've never been married, but that was a huge fucking nitpick for now that you're it's saying like, that. Because there's like, a rehearsal like, dinner. Yeah, right. And Especially because the nice wedding, it looked like that they had set up. Yeah. And you're just showing up for the wedding, no rehearsal, my ass. A couple so. hours, or actually a couple minutes before. Um, last one I had, I had two more, actually. The timeline doesn't add up. So they stole the cop car at 5 a.m., they say, and their valet tickets 5 15 a.m., but they have the cop car when they stole the tiger. Right. So, like, it's a 40-minute drive, mm-hmm. Tyson says, that it, it's just a continuity error, which is what it is. The last one I had is they would know it was Doug in the exchange with the the, the, mat, the, the uh, thing on his head. Dude, way taller. Mike Gap's 6'2". Uh, actual Doug is 5'8". It's funny so, you say that because I literally... That would be like him playing me. Yeah. A six-inch difference. No, that's what... Not cock size, height size. Well, it's actually more it's still than six it's still a six inch difference. It's just you can tell it's, it's the opposite way of what him. you're talking about. It's that you're shorter six inches than him. Yeah, that's besides the point. People. So if so. you were trying to play me, they would know. What do you guys have for nitpicks? You took all mine. I have none extra. Um, I'm sorry. I have. Uh, we're good. I, I I just have uh, to be honest. Like the whole like when the tiger wakes up and just like none of them getting hurt. Um, again, going back to my yeah, well, just, the tiger would have fucked up the whole hotel. When ape shit. The bathroom, especially. And yeah. by the way, security so, wasn't called. Could have broke through the door. Security wasn't called, dude. You're loud past like a. For me, I'm always at a ten. You get, I'm, you're at a three in a hotel. They have a villa, though. At least they're allowed to do what they want. I, I guess, think is, I don't know, is the uh, that's the assumption. But there. either way, honestly, going back, just the whole police situation, like, because besides the body cam thing that we were talking about earlier. You're stealing a cop car. No, the people. Nobody's asking questions. Right. Where's your car? When you're like clearly blacked out. Yeah, cops don't stay the night in their cop car at Vegas hotels. I don't know. That, I don't know. That, that. These did apparently. Uh, scene we would add. I just had a lunch scene on the way to Vegas because I love the whole intro of knowing the characters and the, the gas station scene. Give me a scene where they stop for lunch, similar to the Hangover Two, where they're he's at what is it? My bachelor brunch at IHOP. Like, give me something like that with Alan. It was something stupid. That's the only thing I would want to add. Hearing the, I would have loved to hear the voicemail that Melissa was leaving too. Ooh, um, that's a good let's one. let that one go to voicemail. That right? would be a ah, picture. that's a good one. That is a good one. I want the voicemail that you left. Love that pee break scene. You're not gonna like mine. The police station scene. I don't like it. Ouch. Um, I, don't. I know. I know. I'll take the heat. Lame. I can have some lame takes. What do you got? I got the tux shop scene. You know, I the tux van yeah. riding up. I don't really get it. Obviously, somebody's connected. It shows Alan has crazy friends and like. No, I, I get some of that, but I think I agree, it's a quick yeah. pee. It's not a long scene. No, but but I agree. I think I agree. With though it does add it, if if you were to never see, and I'm not I'm not totally disagree with you because it's sort of like 
you know, eh. But I think I'm with you, though, to a point that it adds to Alan's allure as a character. Yeah, he's like the Kramer, where it's like he's got these he's crazy got, Dude, that's a perfect freaking comparison, it's, dude. It's like, like oh, seriously. he has a guy for this, even though he can't even live outside of home. He's got yeah, Bob he's Sacramento, man. Loser. Who are his other yeah. guys? Black Dog? Who else? Well, I'm saying you see these guys he has in just a small move me, movie, and he might have more guys. Gotcha. Like no, 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 no. To your point, he doesn't have like, like not as many guys as you. Uh, the Matt Walsh Award for relevant actor. Uh, Matt Walsh is probably the. I was winner. about to say uh, Matt Walsh himself. The doctor scene's amazing. Just uh, you know how he's having a casual conversation with the guys while giving a physical to a decrepit old man, and then the. Can I look at that? I'm a doctor. Yeah, you said that a lot last night. <laughs> you're a dentist. The black female cop, also. Yes. My two, I don't know yeah. her name. Uh, what do you guys got? I just had Doug. Um, I mean, Irrelevant Actor, Weakest Link. Yeah, he's in uh, National Treasure. What's the difference between Weakest Link and Irrelevant Actor? Irrelevant Actor is someone you know, but you don't know their name. The, bla- the black cop is a perfect example of that. I also don't know Doug's name. She's been name. in a lot of things. What's Doug's name? No, but he's not in a, but he's not in a lot Durant of shit. The bla- or whatever. Um, no, but I'm saying, you know, it's, it's, I, and me personally, I think, like, you know, Matt Walsh, right? Like, he's in a ton of shit, but you don't necessarily know his name. But he's in a ton of shit. And you're like, oh my God, I know that person. Yeah, he's, he's in a bunch of, uh, so I'm saying that black lady is a good one because yeah. it's like she's in a she's ton of, she's probably the winner. Is it, she's been in a ton of shit. Yeah, right? I, I have Dan Band, to be honest, because how many people actually know Dan Band? I did. We do now. Well, I'm saying I did, but I'm saying, and you know, I, you just said you didn't, but you, but you knew who they were. Yeah. But you, but you didn't know the name. I'm just saying. I think that's a. They're. I think they're a great heat check for that because they're on the screen. They they kill it every time. One Oscar to give. It's really between two people. It's Cooper or Galifianakis in my mind. I don't know if you guys anyone else. But I gave mine to Zach. Yeah, Zach um, for me as well. Made the movie hilarious. Yeah, he did. If there's no him, it would still be okay, like watchable, but it wouldn't be where we're at with how the epicness and of it. Of what memorabilia do you want from the film, Ray? <laughs> Uh, Alan's get up when they go out. It's a good I outfit. mean, you would dominate in dude, that. Dude, like, that's just, like, I saw that. That wouldn't be very Phil of you, but. But, I, but that it. adds yeah. into the yeah. Alan of all of us that we agreed that we all have here. And, uh, I would, and also I would say the car, just like right before it gets fucked. Eh, give me both. I don't care. But that car is just a badass car. Like, it's just. The Benz, baby. Rylan? I want a Stu and Jade hat. Ooh, that's a good one. Yeah. yeah I, <laughs> hey! Just how about the whole yeah. memorabilia? You, 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 you can get the calendar, get the mug, get the hat. I'll get take it, it all. Get it all. Yeah. Um, I think a copy of the camera and the footage would be hilarious. And then, uh, although this isn't memorabilia, I wrote the band, but the Dan band, I'm going to be respectful here. I'd love for them to play at my wedding. You know, I think that'd be cool. I'll, I'll try to hook that up for Thank you. Thank you. Um, Use your I, I had Alan's, star power. Oh, yeah. I had Alan's purse and the Ben's. Alan's purse. Yeah, I can probably get something like that. You, you uh, unanswerable questions. Oh, really? Well, then yes. why did I do it? Huh? Because I did it. Riddle me that. I only had two. What would the room damage be? Because uh, they, you know, they get the eighty thousand dollars in chips. Uh, that might cover it because they charge you a uh, eight hundred dollars. Well, lamp. well, was he was he's a reference? Wolf of Wall Street. I know you've seen. It, you, I know we've seen it more than you. But yeah. when he talks about when they destroyed a full floor. Back in the '80s, it was something like a million something dollars. So we'll assume hundred thousand. Hundred k. Yeah, something around yeah. that for one room. Yeah. More than their age, so they actually lost money on that. With the, he's happy about the thing. Yep. Not to mention the the bands that he gets as a gift is ruined. Not ruined, but they have. So they're losing money on this venture. So the the bands. That's gift like is that, that's like the going. that's like the biggest scene for Doug, to be honest. Yeah. Or besides him pulling out the chips, I think. It's like when he's sitting there with his father, soon to be father in law. He's like, Yeah, that's your gift. And he just laughs because he's yeah. like, Well, thank God I, I didn't destroy your car, but now my gift is fucked. Yeah, so. pretty much. <laughs> uh, and my other one is uh, tied into my room damage. Uh, how do they do so much damage to the room in only three hours? From they got back to five at 5 30, they wake up at 10, they slept for a little bit. In three hours, they weren't in the room before. They did all that damage in three hours? That's possible. Hey, do, do you want to give them an easy answer for that? Getting raid. How about us three go to Vegas? You get me blacked out, and we'll find out what happens. Well, well, now the, I know only not the room's to. on your card. Yeah, right. No, it's on, uh, it's on Rob's it's card. It's on Stu's. So. Uh, yeah. <laughs> what do you got, Ryan? It's on Stu. What do you got, Ryan? Um, I've got, how are they not on the news? You know, Dude, so many fat. cameras, faces. At this point in time, something's going to happen. Stealing cop a cop car, car yeah. all that stuff. Everybody's house. Because it's like breaking into Tyson's house, and he had all that footage. Yep. 
Unless unless he owned that tiger illegally, which I guess could be very possible. So. There's a billion actually unanswerable questions, but that's the one I stuck with. Honestly, I mean, I agree with you. I can I can sit here and just keep naming them. I think the whole movie is just an unanswerable question in a way. Like and in a way that's it's supposed to be, which is which makes yeah. the movie good. But there's just so many things to your point. I mean, literally, like we can just sit here and go phrase the phrase of this chapter chapter of this movie and it's like Where was the Amber Alert? Dude Baby missing. Well, she didn't claim it. I know, but because she's a, a stripper. <laughs> but I mean, but I mean, just again, uh, me going back to the cops for the third fucking time, like I can't get over it. It's like the whole thing about the whole situation with it. It just doesn't make it's unanswerable to me, and never would happen. All right, best quotes. Uh, it's at the corner of get a map and fuck off. <laughs> Our guy Matt Walsh just love how casual he is about that. Uh, I didn't know they gave out rings of the Holocaust. Uh, our best friend's probably face down in a ditch where the meth had butt fucking his corpse right now. And then Alan, that's highly unlikely. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Jesus, he's like a gremlin. He comes with instructions and shit. Uh, Phil was always our designated drunk driver. Uh, also, aged the worst because not cool. You can't be talking about that. But we all had our designated drunk driver, right? Uh, yeah, I was that guy. Yeah, I was that guy. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> and if you must know, we didn't even come inside of her. And then the last one at the end, one of my favorites. I'm thinking of getting my bartender's license <laughs> just to try to fucking hit yeah, on. Hook up with the right, yeah, yeah, this is oh, amazing. Happens. You guys got any other ones? Um, we've touched on a few of these. I love the the old man car scene. I'll hit an old man in public. Uh, Alan's speech. Really anything Ken Jong says. You fuck on me? Um, I mean, that's hilarious. It's funny because he's fat. He's yeah. Funny he's fat. yeah. <laughs> it's funny because he's fat. Um, none, of, none of us can remember anything from last night, remember? <laughs> um, hey, dude, by the way, how epic of a line is that only to throw one word in to make that a super yeah. epic, remember? epic yeah. line? I mean, that's amazing. Uh, I hate Godzilla. He destroys cities. Um, <laughs> I think it's hilarious when they're like, we're back. Um, that we're getting kind of jolts you back. Yeah. We're back. Yeah. Um, and then at the end, when Alan's got his hair slicked back, he's like, is he cool like Phil's? Yeah, right. I thought that was hilarious. <laughs> um, I think when the opening of the opening scene, or the opening chapter of the movie, when they're introducing the characters and they're picking up Phil, and he's like, "It's the weekend, Big Nick, Beat Nick. I do not know you." Like you know, he's just because it's like a normal thing. Like when we were young, you know, like, "Oh, hey, Mister." He's like, "Fall Spider, I don't know you. It's the weekend. Get away from me." You know what I mean? Like <laughs> my time with you is done. I'm, I'm done with you. <laughs> like you know, they, and then also. I, th- I like to think of myself as a one-man wolf pack. Yeah. Yeah. It there just, was it, one, and then there's two, and, and now there's four. Like, just his his speech. Is... I mean, honestly, but there's it, there's so many. Dude, like... uh, Apex Mountain, Galifianakis, I think, yes. 100%. You know, this, this trilogy is his I mean, Apex two, Mountain. You know, two, was an inter- interview between two ferns or whatever that yeah. is. Like, it's been popular but this number, it's not this no no like uh, this Todd Phillips for him. probably no no Joker, Joker? No, because he won a Academy uh, Awards I don't for care him. I don't care this is it Star is born Star, yeah, I, mean, I have this just both, because so it, both it, it bridges the, the gap game. between his early career and his later career and this is the reason he got to be able to do the later career I don't think that yeah I, can, I don't think you can call it Apex I think it's all a build up Ed Helms the awards makes it this is a peak uh, peak office. This is him in this role. I know he got a lot of like leading roles. Uh, what's the stupid movie where horrible he's... bosses? No vacation. A vacation. Oh, but he's the also Millers? the one about uh, where the Millers Cedar Falls or whatever. Oh or no, those. that's that's. I was getting him and Jason uh, Sudeikis messed up. Sudeikis is way better. Uh, Dan no. Band. Is this the best Dan Band performance we've seen? No. You, Old school is better. I like this performance the best. I would say this because they Because he's in the crowd. He yeah. In the crowd. He's, he's, I, I don't know. He's using more profanity and it's just in the crowd. Yeah. It's, it's, this is a crowd yeah. different. They're first, close. First They're time always the They're best time. Old school. Okay. Okay. Uh, Ken Jong. Yeah. Ken John and, and Ken John and This Zach is where I launched him. Too. I don't know that he's been in uh, a bunch of TV shows and you know. Yeah, he's, no, so you have like. Apex Mountain. I'm asking questions if this is their apex. And Vegas is the apex or Vegas. I can agree. Probably. No, Apex or Vegas was probably like Swingers. 80s and 2000s. Early no, 2000s. this definitely. It could be um, the uh, Casino Swingers. Casino could be it. Or uh, the. Swingers? What the fuck is it called? The, they do a bunch of drugs. Um, oh. 
Fear, fear and loathing could be fear and loathing in Las Vegas. That could be awesome. This is way better than that. Even though that I, is no, a no, no, I think, but no, no, but no, we're talking just the apex of Vegas. What do you guys have for apex? Um, I've got getting messed up and blacking out, being a frat boy, saying boom after Burns. Um, you know when Ed Helms is talking to Melissa. This is definitely there. this is definitely the apex of that shit for being a frat boy. Boom. So, well, well, but I'm saying being a frat boy too though, because it's just like yeah. that whole okayness, quote unquote. You know, really doesn't wasn't okay then. Acceptedness went away very quickly within the next decade. So yeah. yeah so I'm who won the movie? Uh, I have. I, I think, got Zach Galifianakis. I, I think it's Cooper. I think it's Cooper, man. No, it's that, it has to be Zach Galifianakis. No. Again, I just said it earlier. Like, the movie would not be this movie without him. I agree with that, but who won this movie is Cooper parlayed this movie into the biggest career. Uh, that's why I have Okay, that's, that's but good. It's that's, this that's, that's movie. A, yeah, that's good. I mean, that's a good argument, but I, I'm thinking this movie is... Who is best in this movie? Galifianakis. Who won this movie? Cooper. No. He's still on the... No, we no, like we can debate this off camera. Like Hangover, this was an awesome time. Big Ray, Mike Ryland, cheers Rayland. as always. The Rayland, we'll be seeing you guys soon. And it's been a complete joy. And we're the three best friends that anyone can have. We're the three best friends that anyone can have. And then we're going to find my best friend, Doug, and give him a best friend hug. Doug! Doug, Doug, Doug. We're the best friend of Dougie Doug Doug Dougie Doug Doug And we're the three best friends that anyone can have. We're the three best friends that anyone can have. Oh, and then we're I'm gonna, gonna find my best friend Doug and give him a best friend hug. Doug Dougie Doug Doug we're the best friend of Dougie Doug Doug Dougie Doug Doug And we're the three best friends that anyone can have. We're the three best friends that anyone can have. Oh, and then we're gonna know. find my best friend Doug and give him a best friend hug. Doug Dougie Doug Doug oh, And then we're gonna find my best friend Doug and give him a best friend hug. Doug And then we're going to find my best friend, Doug, and give him a best friend hug. Doug! Doug, Doug, Doug. Yeah! Wait, 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 wait.